We're talking about breaking free from strong delusion. This is part six, and this is one world religion, the second part of that, and we're, we're going to get into this lesson. We want to remember that the Torah, Yahweh's teaching and instructions, his principles, his plans, his prophecies, his people, his Mashiach, and soon returning king, his future kings and priests, right? All of these individuals is coming through the Hebrew people, not Greeks, not Gentiles, not Romans, is coming through the Hebrew people. Don't get that twisted. Don't get that twisted. He has a very special relationship with the children of Israel. So in the backdrop of this knowledge, as we prepare to cover this vital information, I want to review our foundational understanding of Satan's working in the world because you know we we can't forget this. He has a system by which he operates in. Uh, many churches are not teaching this, and that's one of the reasons why it's, it's the, many of the people in the churches are operating in a strong delusion. But Satan deceives the whole world. He does not stand in truth. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resource because he is the father of lies. Satan is the God of this world and he's blinding the minds of those who are perishing. Satan transforms himself into an angel of light to give you the impression that he's bringing you light, he's bringing you truth. But we know that's just false, right? There's no truth in him. He has ministers who preach and teach about Messiah, but they're actually ministers for his deceptions. And the devil is our adversary. He walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. So if you're not vigilant and sound-minded, he can very likely devour you. At this point here, he has ministers who preach and teach about Messiah, but they're actually ministers for his deception. We're going to focus on this today. And we're going to pull the covers off the enemy. We're going to pull the covers off these imps that's being used uh, as, as supposedly the leadership and the hi hierarchy of the church, but they're on assignment by the devil. We now know that the entire world will unite in religious worship, and the recipient of that worship will be Satan, who some call Lucifer, and his antichrist child, the beast. The book of Revelation tells us this, and all the world, wandered after the beast, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And again, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name's not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And certainly you know you want to find yourself in that book. Now we will focus on the plan that Satan launched so many centuries ago to bring us to this moment in time where so many of the world's population are ready to receive him. And we certainly know everything started from the Tower of Babel, the misreligion of Babylon. Nimrod, he was a king. And here's a plot twist. The plot twist starts with the one, Semiramis. Semiramis was the first wife of Cush. She was also the mother of Nimrod. When Cush lost his power, Semiramis sought for a way to stay in power. And she came up with the unthinkable idea. She married her own son, Nimrod. When Nimrod was killed, she developed yet another plan to stay in power. She became pregnant. And then she claimed to be impregnated by the deceased Nimrod. Semiramis stated she was having a virgin birth from the spirit of Nimrod. This is the beginning of father and mother God worship. Semiramis becomes a driving force behind this polytheistic belief. When Yahweh confused the languages of Nimrod's followers at the Tower of Babel, the people scattered over the face of the earth, taking this father and mother God worship with them. So why is this important? Because Semiramis is key. 
when you look at all the different faiths around the world, they all have this polytheistic idea of a sun god, a moon goddess, and the son of God. In Babylon, we know it's Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. In Egypt, they had Osiris, Isis, and Horus. In Greece, he had Dionysus, Artemis, and Apollo. And in Rome, Bacchus, Diana, and Apollo. Mm -hmm. But here's the key. Roman Catholicism. And he, this is where the trouble starts, right here. And for the sun god, you just simply have God or God the Father. For the moon goddess, Virgin Mary. And for the son of God, Jesus. And when you hear that word today, when you hear that name, Jesus, today, more times than not, they're really referencing the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. This Jesus they're talking about under Catholicism is not the Jesus of the Bible. He is not the Jesus of the Bible. So last week we saw where Roman Catholicism slash Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. This happened in 324 AD. So the Roman Catholic Church is the first hijacker of the way. And we learned from last week, the way is the biblical belief in Yeshua HaMashiach. So they worship me in vain, teaching the precepts of men as doctrines. He said, this is vanity. Anyone that's following this faith, it is vanity. So don't be robbed. Colossians 2 8 tells us, beware. Does anyone rob you through philosophy and vain deceit according to what? The tradition of men, according to the elements of the world, and not according to Mashiach? Don't get caught up in this foolishness. Come out from her. Come out. 2 Timothy 2.15 says that you should study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, right? Study. So each and every one of us, you must give attention to his word. So it is time that you recognize where your doctrines come from and why you do certain things. Many under the sound of my voice, have been impacted by these doctrines. So again, the Torah, Yahweh's teaching and instructions, his principles, his plans, his prophecies, his people, his Mashiach, and soon returning king, his future kings and priests, all of this comes through the Hebrew people, not the Romans, not the pagans. <laughs> He did not change the ways of the Hebrews. Never. I'm exposing falsehoods and calling on those who truly desire our Father to set yourself apart from this world and be what our Father truly desires. The priests at the top of this pagan religion, they know full well who they serve. And it is not the Most High Elohim. Pay very close attention to this part. These are bishops in the pulpit singing prayers over the people. And this, the word he's using there is Lucifer, his flame dawning his own creation. Talking about Lucifer. And if you look at the word, this is Rome's invocation of Lucifer. And then part of it reads, his flame dawning his own creation May I say, O Lucifer, who knows no setting, Christ your son. Is that madness or what? Claiming Christ to be the son of Lucifer. But guess what? Their Christ, the Antichrist, yes. is the son of Lucifer. Yes. So when they go to church and they pray and they make these invocations, they're not praying on behalf of the Most High Elohim or his Mashiach. They're praying on behalf of the devil and his Antichrist. Please hear what I'm saying. This same, same thing, different one. It doesn't matter where you go. If it's a Catholic church, flaming Lucifer finds mankind. I say, O Lucifer, 
who will never set. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, they, they, man, this is, it's absolutely ridiculous. And here's the thing, they're saying this stuff in Latin that people are being prayed over and sang, sung over in the name of Lucifer, and they don't even know it. Wow. They don't even know it. Yes. Catholic priests actually pray to Lucifer, and they revere him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I feel you, bro. That's some off stuff, right? That's some off stuff. So we're talking about the rise of the one world religion. The rise of the one world religion. The one world religion is where the whole world worships Satan. <laughs> the one world religion, this whole concept, right? You got a world a, alliance of religions. You got this interfaith council. Look at the emblem of, for the interfaith council. You got Buddhists. You got the, the present day Jewish people. You got Muslims. Hare Krishnas, you got all these different faiths falling under the umbrella, including Christianity, you know, mainstream Christianity, this interfaith council. You got the World Council of Religious Leaders. And Pope Francis, you know, he's he's leading all of this into one world religion. So the devil's using the Pope and his satanic agenda to rally the world's population into his deception to follow Satan into his new world order. Modern day Jews, Christians, and Muslims are participating in this. Now, here's, here's something you need to understand. When the Most High called the Hebrew people, he told them, don't do as the nations do. The Hebrews were called to be a separated people, to be an example of the goodness of the Most High Elohim, but he said, don't do as they do. Don't worship as they worship. He made that very clear. So the point I'm making, if these present day Jews were legit, there's no way you can get them into fellowship with heathens. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. So the, the mere fact that they're coming together under one umbrella, under this interfaith umbrella, is proof that they are not in the scriptures. They're not the people of the book. It's just a sidebar there, but you need to understand that. So all these people are joining forces to usher in the worship of Satan under the authority of his new world order. All of them, all these different people. You got this guy, you see that, that prayer shawl right there? You know, all these people, you got, you got all these different religions up here. There's more than just two or three religions. You got Buddhists, Hare Krishnas, um, you, you may even have some Wicca up there. Might be. You can't see everybody because they're definitely part of the coexistent movement. So there's no way you would find a true Hebrew believer, follower of the Most High Elohim. They would not be on this stage. Mm -hmm. They would not be in this audience. Mm -hmm. So the coexist movement, look at this now, Islam, Buddhism, Scientology, Judaism, Paganism, Wiccan, which is witchcraft, mm -hmm. and, and modern day Christianity, all of this is under the coexist movement, and you will find all of them under one roof. There's a problem with that. All of these things under this coexist movement are all different religions that are centered around the same God. Same God. Who is that? Mm -hmm. Satan. Lucifer. However you want to call him. You got many names, mm -hmm. right? He's trying to become the most high. He wants to have everybody worship him like the most high. And guess what? Save those individuals whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He will have every soul on the planet worshiping him. We're almost done. The point I'm making to you is that if you are trying to get closer to the Messiah and be ready for him, you must identify the falsehoods and deceptions. You must. Second Timothy 3. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation 
through faith, which is in Mashiach Yeshua. All scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Not the catechisms, the word of the Most High Elohim. So what are you talking about now? We're talking about the Elohim of Israel. Why is that? Because he is the one true Elohim.